Hi guys, let's have a look at how to create fabulous mock-ups on your Windows PC with Affinity Photo. Now these are done with PSD template um, smart objects that you can download from lots of places on the internet and I'll show you where in a moment. Mock-ups are a lot of fun to promote your products with. So how to mock up your designs. So you've created a knockout design. Now it's time to present it to your client. This is where mock-ups come in handy. A mock-up is a full rendering of your design on one or more of the client's products like labels, business cards, stationery and signage. A more complex mock-up might show the client's book on a bookshelf or in a reader's hands, showing the world the product will inhabit. Here's an excellent mock-up just to the side there. What mock-up to use? The burning question. An effective mock-up doesn't just make a design three-dimensional. It brings a design to life. When you're working on a mock-up, keep the following tips in mind. Show the product in action. Keep the mock-up focused. Stay away from stock photos. That's an important one. Showcase multiple well-thought-out mock-up scenes featuring the design. Bad example? <laughs> An A4 frame. A good example, the same frame, you'll note, but on a wall with a piece of decoration beside it. So the, the customer or client can see just what the design might look like in situ. Now, where did I get my mock-ups from? Cover Vault. They're really neat. A lot of them are free, well, most of them, I think, and they're well-made PSD mock-ups. Where do you get them from? Right there, https colon double slash covervault.com. One of the best sources around for good quality mock-ups and 100% free. There are lots of sources available with a Google search, but you need one that's reliable and consistent. Now, I'm not associated with this site in any way. And because they're free, I don't even get any royalties from it. But there you go. I might add, I just love the work and consider it worth sharing. Of course, this can equally easily be done on the desktop. But on the iPad, hmm, you're right there with your client impressing the heck out of them. On a laptop, now this, this Windows version has been done on a Toshiba L630 laptop. And you can cart that around. You might have a, um, a Mac type laptop or an Apple or a Windows type laptop or an iPad or even one of the, um, one of the tablets that you can get that Affinity runs on. If you're a crafter or author, your marketing can move to the next level. Now, let's start with a nice book cover using a suitable mock-up. Collect the images you'll use. Nothing worse than getting halfway through the job and discovering, oh, what image am I going to put on the cover? Well, hopefully you've already made the cover image. It might be the cover of your book you've just made. It might be your latest hmm, product brochure. It might be a photo of a billboard you've done. Who knows? But collect the images you will use. Download a stunning mock-up, for example, a 5x8 book, Gun Crime Mystery book mock-up. And you can see it there. You're ready to go. Important. Now, remember this. Particularly with the Windows PC version of Affinity Photo, it converts smart objects in Photoshop documents to pixel layers by default. To convert to embedded documents instead, and that's what the Affinity Photo equivalent of smart objects is, they're embedded documents. Turn on Import PSD Smart Objects where possible in the app's general preferences. So go to Preferences and tick that one. Smart objects that are linked, meaning their content comes from an external file, are not converted to embedded documents. Now, just about every one of these um, mock-up PSDs that I've come across from this site, they're embedded, so there's no problem. 
I really hate linked images because you try and move them around and you always lose the links. Big problems. Okay, but remember that before you even start, go to Preferences and turn on Import PSD Smart Objects where possible. Easy to do. Job done then. Load the mock-up into Affinity Photo. So extract the zip file that you download. Check the preview file to make sure it's the one you want. Load the PSD file into Affinity Photo. Carefully look through the layers without altering them. You can see on the right hand side there, there's a whole slew of layers. With this mock-up, you can change the cover image and the background if you want to. I'm only changing part of the cover image. In this exercise, in any case. Now, changing the book cover, make sure your own cover design image is done and ready and stored where you can easily access it. Select the layer with the image. This is in the mock-up. You've got it loaded, the PSD file, and that's what it will look like when you expand the image. And you can see it there, cover. Embedded document written beside it. If it's got pixel layer, exit the whole thing, go back to your preferences and turn on load PSD files because you've forgotten to do it. Now double tap on the image icon, not the text. Don't tap on the text, that's a waste of time. Tap on the little image that's there and it will load as a separate panel as part of the main workspace. Tricky this one. And that's what it looks like. And you can see on the right hand side there, there are three layers, texture and layer 18, it's pixels. You've got three layers there. Your display will look like this. So only the actual image is showing with its layers. We will again only change the image layer here with our pre-selected cover design. No need to touch the layers below the image. Now, select the top image layer in this case. And you can see I've got it selected, layer 22. Open file and place your own pre-designed cover image. Carefully check its size and position. You should be fairly familiar with this. And there it is, that's the one I'm using and I've placed it there. With the image in the same position as the original, simply unselect the original and leave it there for future reference if you like. Or you can remove or hide the unwanted image. You can see I've got it unticked there, so it's not being referred to. Now there we go, satisfied. Now select files in the top left hand corner there, then select close you'll go back to the original image and it'll just take a moment. It depends on the speed of your system. Sometimes it's instant. My little old laptop struggling along, it just takes a moment and there you are, back at the original uh, mock-up. And there's the mock-up sitting in there, looking all lovely, my image. Uh-huh, but you say, oh, forgot to add the title and author, etc. onto your cover? Hmm. Not very good design there, so let's fix it. Now, that's better. I've double clicked on the image, gone to the image and corrected it. I've put my name on there and Murder at the Zoo is the book title, for want of a better title. And there we go. Back to the, back to the mock-up. Remember that if you want to edit the cover image at all, just go back to the image layer and double tap on it. It will open as a separate workspace. Then save it all again by tapping close. And there it'll be straight back in your um, straight back in your original mock-up. And you can see Murder at the Zoos on the top, Robert Chalmers, and you've got blood dripping down. That's a that's one of the textures that's part of the whole thing. Very nice. That's a good cover design. And that's about all there is to it, really.
Thanks for watching this fun little exercise. Remember to subscribe, please. I really appreciate it. Tap the little thumbs up to give it a thumbs up and tap the bell if you wanted to be reminded when new videos appear.